choice for medium duty power. In a significant segment of the medium duty truck market, in classes six and seven, but more broadly including gross vehicle weights from 16,000 to 50,000 pounds, the gasoline to diesel engine mix is changing dramatically. It's obvious from this graph that there's a place for both gasoline and diesel power in today's market. Currently, 20% of medium duties are diesel powered. It's projected that by 1985, diesel installations will exceed 50%. And with this anticipated growth, it's highly probable a lot of people will be asking which engine, gas or diesel, will be right for them. The key lies in understanding both kinds of engines and selecting the best one to do the job. And for 1981, Chevy offers a broad choice of both gas and diesel to provide the right engine for the right application. There are four main factors that must be considered when recommending an engine for a given application. The torque and horsepower available from the engine. The frontal area of the truck, which pushes air and uses horsepower. The gross weight, which needs torque to move it and uses horsepower to keep it moving. And the operating cost. Let's look first at the torque and horsepower factor. Remember, torque is the force that's needed to get the vehicle rolling. Horsepower is what's needed to keep the vehicle rolling. A typical medium duty gasoline engine has a torque curve that looks like this and a horsepower curve like this. When the truck starts out with its load, torque and horsepower climb as the engine's RPM increases. As engine speed increases, torque reaches its peak and drops off, while horsepower continues to climb. At cruising speed, torque has fallen off, but horsepower keeps the load rolling. Those characteristics suggest a gas engine for applications calling for sustained higher speeds, full loads at highway speeds, say more than 60% of the time. On the other hand, a mid-range diesel for mediums has a torque curve and a horsepower curve like these. When the truck starts moving with a low RPM, the engine's torque is already at or near peak. And remember, it's torque that's necessary to get the vehicle rolling. As the rig accelerates, torque stays very nearly constant as horsepower climbs. Even at moderate cruising speeds, a mid-range diesel's torque drops so little that the curve is virtually flat over the entire operating range. Because a mid-range diesel is a very high compression engine, not designed for constant full load, full throttle work, its most efficient operation comes with a combination of relatively high torque and lower horsepower at slower speeds. Or in other words, full loads at city speeds with a lot of stop and go driving. Now consider the second factor, frontal area the part of the truck that creates air resistance. Air resistance uses up horsepower. The greater the resistance, the more horsepower needed to overcome it. Regardless of the engine, if you drive a truck at 55 miles an hour and have a total frontal area of 72 square feet, essentially body width multiplied by overall vehicle height, you need 57 horsepower just to overcome air drag. If the frontal area is 92 square feet, you need 73 horsepower. The greater the frontal area at the same speed, the greater the horsepower required. And the greater the speed, the more the demand on the engine. Take this a step further and apply it to an engine rated at 205 gross horsepower. Then subtract the need to overcome air resistance, 73 horsepower. This leaves 132 horsepower to allow for grades, rolling resistance, power losses in the drive line and optional equipment, and the necessary reserve power for passing. Gross weight, or the vehicle and payload weight combined, is the third factor, because weight also uses an engine's horsepower. As a truck begins to roll, its weight tends to hold it back, just like air resistance. Basically, a truck's rolling resistance increases with an increase in road speed and or weight and the greater the speed or weight, 
the more horsepower the engine has to deliver to overcome that resistance. At 55 miles an hour, for example, a gross vehicle weight of 20,000 pounds needs 32 horsepower to overcome rolling resistance and keep the truck moving. A rig with a 35,000 pound gross weight at the same speed requires 56 horsepower. The fourth factor to consider in selecting an engine for a medium duty is operating cost. And medium duty truck operation is a dollars and cents business. Without any question, a diesel's most appealing feature is fuel economy. Depending on the operation, it can deliver substantially better economy than a comparable gas engine doing the same job. Detroit Diesel Allison's fuel pincher, for example, generally may be expected to offer a 50 to 90 percent improvement over the fuel mileage obtained by a gasoline engine performing the same job. One reason is that a diesel idles at a much lower RPM. It's understandable then that the lure of diesel economy is very strong. But it's also true that the premium for a mid-range diesel is in the area of $4,500 or more. The trick is to figure the payback over the life of the truck to see whether or not it's economically sound to justify this kind of initial expense. The critical number in any payback calculation, of course, is the one for mileage. The higher the mileage, the faster the payback, and vice versa. Look at fuel costs first. For the sake of comparison, figure a diesel at 9 miles per gallon, a gas engine truck at 5 miles per gallon, and figure that both trucks run 20,000 miles a year. That's 2,222 gallons for the diesel, 4,000 for gas. Now assume a dollar and a half a gallon for fuel. That adds up to $3,333 for diesel, $6,000 for gas. So over the course of the 20,000 miles in this example, the fuel savings is $2,667 in favor of the diesel in the first year. If fuel costs remain the same, the savings for five years could look like this. A total advantage for the diesel of $13,335. If fuel prices increase, the diesel advantage becomes even greater. On the basis of fuel savings alone, the diesel in this example should pay for itself in less than two years based on an approximate $4,500 premium. Besides fuel costs, there are other considerations that should also be included in the payback formula. Depreciation, higher write-offs for a diesel because the engine's more expensive. Maintenance costs, lower for a diesel. Resale value, traditionally higher for diesels. Investment tax credits, and so on. Now, what are the best applications for mid-range diesels? Operation generally with full or varying loads at city speeds with high mileage. A lot of stop and go driving for full use of a diesel's high torque, low RPM characteristics. Mid range diesels available from Chevrolet start with Detroit Diesel Allison's 8.2 liter V8 that fits neatly under the hood of Chevy's standard 97.5 inch conventional cab. It's called the Fuel Pincher and it comes in two versions a naturally aspirated model available in single axle 60 and 70 series, a good choice for moderate loads in stop and go city service, and a turbocharged fuel pincher with power to handle GVWRs up to 50,000 pounds to meet the heavier demands of pickup and delivery and tank or dump truck operation. Caterpillar's 3208 has the diesel performance that used to be available only in heavier trucks. There's an economy 3208 designed for single-axle Kodiak cab models for in-city service, and two premium versions, available for single or tandem rear-axle Kodiaks, and designed for city delivery kinds of applications that require some driving at highway speeds. Both are for heavy-duty work, GVWs to 50,000 pounds. Cummins VT225 is a turbocharged V8 available in single and tandem-axle Kodiak models and it features removable cylinder liners which facilitate in-frame overhauls as a way to reduce vehicle downtime. Power and torque are ample to suit heavy in-city requirements and for pulling heavy GVWs over the road at legal speeds. In all, there are six mid-range diesel versions available from Chevrolet, 
to help give the operator the kind of performance his application demands. Beverage delivery, heating or fuel oil delivery, dump trucks, garbage and trash collection, package pickup and delivery, agricultural work, construction, school buses and local moving with tractor trailers. One of the attractions of gas engines when compared with diesels is their low initial cost. Gas power is most attractive when the application calls for low annual mileage, 20,000 miles or less a year, or less than 50 miles a day because gas engines are not as fuel efficient as comparable diesels. And when it comes to choosing gasoline power with its low initial price, Chevrolet offers a full choice of tough, dependable gasoline engines. The 4.8 liter 6 is available for 50 and 60 series trucks and can be used in light hauling applications. The 5.7 liter V8 is standard for 50 and 60 series trucks. It's capable of handling up to 24,000 pounds of gross vehicle weight and is well suited to low mileage city delivery work. Chevy's 6 liter V8 is standard for 70 series mediums. It's capable of GVWs to 33,000 pounds and is a good power plant for moderate loads in hilly areas or for moving full gross loads out of steep loading ramps. A 7 liter V8 is available for 70 series trucks. At 210 horsepower, it's designed for loads of 33,000 to 50,000 pounds and it works well in tractor trailer applications and others that require over the road hauling. In determining the most efficient power for a medium duty truck, careful consideration of four main factors will help point the way. The horsepower and torque available from the engine. The truck's frontal area and air resistance. The vehicle's gross weight. And the operating cost. And specific help is in the data book. But whether the optimum choice is a gasoline engine for low mileage hauling at relatively high speeds, or a diesel for varying loads and high mileage at lower speeds, Chevrolet offers a wide choice of power for medium duty truck applications. Chevy Trucks. <laughs>